That is gold. Pure gold. Yeah, I'm Ken Burkholder. I was born in Boise, Idaho. My dad was born in Nampa, Idaho, just down the valley in 1915. Um, I was one of six siblings, and I had older brothers, and we fished a lot. And I was introduced to the wilds of Idaho very early in life. And I became attracted to fly fishing because it was enjoyable. I was outside normally with my brothers and it was a lot of enjoyment. But we fish creeks and I had a greater desire to catch larger fish so I began fishing larger waters like South Fork of the Boise, Silver Creek. Ultimately I guided on the South Fork of the Snake for 30 years which is revolutionary to me because it was a living laboratory every day I would I, I would guide and if I had an issue with rejection I would try to go home and tie flies at the vise that worked the next day and this was an ongoing laboratory for a very, very, very long time. And it was a challenge, and I accepted the challenge, and it was rewarding because when you overcome rejection, it's a pleasure. So I have a fly here called the Bareback Rider, and... This fly, I'm not sure when I designed this fly, but it's probably been over 20 years ago. And it was out of a dissatisfaction with chubby chernobyls and parachute hoppers, which certainly caught fish. But I wanted to have a fly designed that had legs placed on a fly and knotted in such a way that actually looked like a bug. And this took me a long time to accomplish. I've gone through lots of different revolutions, evolutions, and um, but ultimately this particular style has been requested from me by many, many guides all over the West and they've been really very pleased with them so it's a it's a foam construct I'm using a cutter from River Road Creations which I did not used to do I used to just cut it with a pair of scissors and on a mat and a razor blade but that has changed but anyway, this fly is, I'm proud of this fly. It's been a really good fly, and it's really deadly. <laughs> okay, so when I make these bugs, to make them bilaterally symmetrical, I like to use graph paper just to make them even. And I think this is a pretty good example of how I can make them even by using graph paper. Uh, this new fly, this new bareback rider, does have eyes, which you can see, which is a modification. I don't know if it's going to make a big difference, but I, I do like the way it looks. But this is just another way of measuring and being accurate. Okay, in my experience on the South Fork of the Snake, 
there are two major stonefly hatches. Well, large stonefly hatches. Of course, we have yellow sallies, which are highly important. It's a moderately a riffle type flat water type fly and it's smaller and you know a lot of people don't really like to fish smaller flies they like enjoy fishing larger flies they can see well in July there's a hatch of Acronuria which is a large golden stonefly which both males and females fly and it's a great hatch to fish with Later in August, there's a hatch called Clausenia sabulosa. And this fly is really interesting because it's a golden stonefly and it's related closely to the squalas because the males have something called brachypterous wings, meaning they're undeveloped and the males do not fly. So in September, as the water lowers on the snake and these waters throughout the west, what happens is that it precipitates a hatch of these insects. So if you see a sudden water drop on the river, you will notice shucks of these insects on damp, water, damp exposed waters. When you see this, you know they're out. And what happens, if they hatch in the middle of the river or towards an island, they automatically migrate towards the shore. They swim towards the shore. Actually, swim. And as they're approaching the shore, these fish are looking for them. And it's an absolute key fly to have. This is why so many flies have been designed to imitate this bug that have eventually won the Jackson Hole One Fly. They're common in Jackson Hole that time of year as well as below Palisades Dam. So the question for me was how do I design a fly for both? So here you have a bareback rider which is a larger golden stone fly. As you see it has wings. This is a Clausenia. It's a smaller stonefly. It doesn't really have wings, but it has a cider that an angler can see. And it has a profile that's small. And I've modified it with this little cut wing from River Road Creations. And their color variations vary. They can be kind of a creamy yellow to a creamy brown with a little dark I've just played around with this so long because I just want to crack the code and I'm getting closer I haven't actually done it but I'm inching closer but what I've designed so far does work and I'm pleased with it okay this is a bareback rider salmon fly and salmon flies are kind of a funny hatch you know, sometimes you see them out in great numbers, but the fish are not eating them. Um, sometimes a prevailing wind may blow them up a canyon miles above where they're actually hatching, and the fish really haven't keyed on them yet. But when they are hatching and then they breed, and then they start fluttering around to deposit their eggs. A nice big fluffy orange salmon fly tossed towards the bank can be a very effective fly. And it's probably as much fun dry fly fishing as any other fly I know. So this particular fly has UV orange egg yarn dubbing tied with a loop. It has laminated foam, three layers of laminated foam, black, orange, and black. And then it has a custom cutter 
top piece of foam that is cut to flatten it out. So when you toss it, it will lay flat. It's not going to tip on its side. And then you just give it a little twitch. But it has the legs right. They're accurately placed. It's a good color. And it's a good size. So I would fish this anywhere there's a salmon fly hatch. You just need to have the right day.